Good day, fellow investors. The first weekend of May, Woodstock for capitalists, Warren Buffett, Charlie Munger, answering our questions and discussing what has been going on with them, with Berkshire, and six hours of entertainment where every investor can learn so much. I have written down 15 points that I got out from the discussion and I want to share them with you. I'll save you six hours of listening to Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger if you don't have the time and we'll let's see, show a little bit how I have on some points that they are mentioning a different perspective. We'll discuss accounting changes, index changes, how survivals win, how to invest when things are not good, discussing gold, China and the US, what does Buffett think about the trade war, Wells Fargo, healthcare, his partnership with Amazon and JP Morgan, how would he invest 1 billion now in China or the US, why long-term bonds are a terrible investment, Moats and Elon Musk, the good buyback Apple, formula for intrinsic value, asset light businesses, cryptocurrencies, 401k plans, and missing out on Amazon. Okay, the first thing I want to show is very important accounting changes. And if you look at Berkshire's earnings, they will be negative for the first quarter compared to very positive earnings for 2017. However, if you see operating earnings are much more positive than 2017 at 5.2 billion, but investments and derivative gains and losses were negative as they now have to mark to market on a daily basis all the stocks they own. So as we have seen, the market was volatile, the stocks Berkshire owns have gone down and that's why you see the 6 billion loss there. Perhaps tomorrow or in the next 10, 20 days, those stocks will go up or they perhaps even did go up in since the date of the report, what was it, 30 March. So that might already have changed. So we now have to focus when we discuss earnings of Berkshire to the operating earnings and then calculate the taxes ourselves to get to, let's say, the normal adjusted earnings for Berkshire. Stock prices will go up and down and there will be huge losses and huge gains there. So we have to even that out. So the price earnings ratio for Berkshire is something you can forget now. You have to calculate it yourself. Now, Buffett discusses something, how it was a great investment to invest in the S&P 500, but then he shows this from 1942, I think. And he shows how there were various indexes one could invest then. The 30 industrials, 20 railroads, 15 utilities, and 65 stocks. And then he discusses how the Dow Jones index survived, but, what happened to the railroad index, utilities index, or the other 65 stocks index? Nobody talks about that. And we now have the S&P 500 that Buffett is promoting, but then it didn't exist. So he says, yeah, I believe if you invested 10,000 in the S&P 500 in 1942, it would now be 51 million. But the S&P 500 didn't exist then. And so it's all about survivor survivorship bias, because yes, we look at the Dow, but who looks at the railroad index, which was very, very strong then, and people did invest in then equal to the Dow or in the utilities or all other players. So that's something to keep in mind. When you see all those indexes, we are now at 6,000 indices around the world and some of them will do well and those will be picked. Oh yes, you should invest in stocks. Those who don't do well get forgotten, get put away, nobody talks about the railway index now. So keep that in mind when you invest in indices. So the key with Buffett always invest when things are not good. He says that if you invested 10,000 in the S&P 500 in 1942, when of course I already mentioned didn't exist, now it would be 51 million. And he then touch, touches on gold, that if you invested at the same point 10,000 in gold, that you would have 300 ounces of gold that didn't produce anything and the value would be around 400,000. That is about 50 million less. And here I agree with Buffett. Gold is not an investment and that's a very important message for all my viewers. Gold is a hedge for loose monetary policy and that's something that can happen in the next 10 years and that's why I like to be hedged a little bit with gold. And that's it. L really, portfolio allocation, rebalancing, trading, lowering, increasing and then I also like to own miners that are producing something, they have a cost, they have a selling price, so it isn't that of a bad investment as holding physical gold. However, on the long term 
You don't want to own gold nor cash in the long term. You want to own producing productive assets like stocks in the long term because that will help you do wonders. However, a little hedge here and there when it's opportune to do so, it's not bad. China and the US, he says long term sub superpowers and that he doesn't think nobody there will do foolish things to dampen global prosperity. And I think we are both smart, the presidents are both smart to, let's say, gain a po few political points here and there, but no fears. Now, number five is Wells Fargo. Buffett always talks about investing in great companies with integrity, with integrity management, but then Wells Fargo is not a business like that and it's really in trouble. And should Buffett sell? And here you see Buffett says something, but then does the opposite because he is still invested in Wells Fargo and I think he cannot sell because if he would start selling Wells Fargo, then the bank would go bankrupt because then if Buffett leaves something like that, it's hasta la vista. And that's why he always is very careful with what he's saying and wh what he is doing. And you have to always see behind the lines, behind what he is saying, what the nice granddaddy from Omaha is saying and what he, the real businessman is doing. So he's holding to Wells Fargo, his cost base is much, much lower than where the stock is now. And he doesn't really care about the ups and downs as long as the company is profitable, making good businesses and perhaps even increasing the profits and being better in the future. So solving that integrity issue. He mentioned that he was buying American Express when it was in trouble and all other companies mostly when they are in trouble. He's not buying Wells Fargo now more. He already had it in the beginning. But that shows how he's not just a nice guy, he's a really sharky businessman. Just a note on the healthcare partnership with JP Morgan and Amazon. This is a very important topic and I will dedicate a special video for it. But they say they are now at having a CEO in a few months and that's how long term they think no rush. But this is really disruptive or even displacing for current healthcare. So be careful on healthcare investments, other healthcare investments you have. When he was asked how to invest 1 billion China or the US, Buffett, he is biased domestically US. Munger, he says, he is much more exposed to China because he sees the growth, he sees the potential, he sees the valuation and Munger loves China more than Buffett. So Munger is, of course, smaller portfolio. He is more flexible and tells us that we might again relook at China, especially as there have been some new opportunities. And as I did a series in the summer on China, I'll do now again on Chinese stock stocks to see what's going on and whether there are better new opportunities, especially from the new IPOs that some have fallen really significantly. Modes on Elon Musk. Elon Musk recently, he always has to comment on everything, said how modes are lame and how it's all about innovation. Buffett agrees that innovation is key and it has become more difficult to keep a moat, but he will stick to businesses with moats. And the tension between the guys will probably continue because Elon Musk is leveraged, aggressive, marketing, losing money, not having a profitable business model and Buffett is something completely opposite. So it's very nice to see how these two different worlds interact and grow in this environment. We'll see who will, well, Buffett is already has been around for 50 years. We'll see, I think, I hope Musk will also be around in 50 years, but he will have to start doing business better. He should l learn how to do business not just chasing capital around after capital round. Now the good buybacks. Apple just announced 100 billion buybacks and Buffett is happy to own Apple because they will own more and more about the company that has a great brand, great ecosystem, great cash flows. Munger in his style says how some people do buybacks just to keep the stock up, which is insane and immoral. Apart from that is fine. So. It's up to us to see whether the buybacks of the stocks we own are fine or immoral. On Apple, as they believe that the intrinsic value of Apple is much higher than the current level and that the best investment from Apple's cash is to reinvest it in the stocks. So if Buffett says that, it might be the case that the Apple investment is still very, very good to buy back the stock. Looking, of course, at the long term. And I made a video on why Buffett is buying Apple.
Then there was a really complex form, formula-like question, mathematics, how do they analyze stocks, what's the intrinsic value, and they say there is no formula. Sometimes you just use common sense, you see, okay, this is cheap, let's buy it. Uh, like Costco Munger says, it was, a, it was at a PE ratio of 12, the price to book ratio was 3 point something, but he found it very cheaply at that level and they bought in Costco, he bought Costco. So it's all about common sense, every stock is different, like person, persons, you can, you have to use all the formulas in the book, perhaps also in my book, but the key is to really apply common sense because everybody has all the formulas, there is no magic formula, everybody has all the formulas, you need to have all the formulas, you need to apply them and then use common sense. Then something very interesting, today's successful businesses are asset light. He doesn't expect, he didn't expect corporate America to have earnings above 6% of GDP, which is now around 8 to 10% of GDP since 2008. But the four largest companies today don't need any tangible assets to operate, no depreciation. So their returns on equity are much, much higher. And that's what changed in the world. And he thinks the market didn't really adjust yet for asset light businesses, which means higher returns on investment. Cryptocurrencies, nobody likes it. Buffett doesn't like it because it's all about finding the next fool that will pay more for that. Those are non-productive assets like gold. And in this case, there are many, 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 many incentives for other people's IPOs, uh, chasing fees, chasing rewards, chasing everything. But the main promise of cryptocurrencies is exchanging money, making transactions, and that should be frictionless and costless on a piece of paper, on a check, or even cheaper. When that some cryptocurrencies reach that, then it will be good for them or a good business. But nobody will make any money of it because that's not the point. And that's what also Buffett says. Like the tulip mania on 401k plans, the key is he's always promoting index fund investments. But his employees, all the 250,000 Berkshire employees cannot invest in index funds. And that's very, very interesting. They have to invest in actively managed funds with higher fees and perhaps buying more of Berkshire. So again, he's saying something doing the opposite. Be careful with that and be careful with investing in index funds. There is something behind that's not so correct and moral from Buffett there. Number 15, he says that he missed out on Amazon because what Jeff Bezos did was a miracle and he doesn't invest in miracles. So his first rule is always don't lose money. You can always lose money with Amazon. You could always have lost money, had lost money with Amazon in the past. And that's why he didn't invest. He doesn't like to lose money. So this was the 15 comments I found from Buffett. Hope you enjoyed. Hope I summarized. Looking forward to your comments, your points that you talk, took out from the conference. Always nice to read your comments. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.